and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining us today is that rooting tooting silver quill. Yeah, I am the Sazana, y'all. Zigluna. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I apparently am sending you into a nervous conniption, which, so, good day, good day. I wish the audience would know what happened earlier. I, uh, but maybe Patreon members would know, who knows, right? Uh, but anywho, also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Silver. Hi. You're nothing but a pajama wearing, basket face, slipper wielding, Clyde Jeep, Balshade, gather up, flat mail, leather and gra mail, Jesse Oaf looking, schooner, naff, plucky, sand, milk drinking, soy face, shill fit. Mum with sniveling warm eyed hot and bloth, vile snoochy calibric tate. Suffering oh, suffocatash. Although, how did you know what I'm wearing? I can see through the internet I am secretly watching you outside your window, I guess. I don't know. The internet is outside my window? Well, <laughs> dang, that's why I can never get a signal. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, on today's show, um, I, I don't know if whom you, you guys at home can tell by our Western or Southern accent, but we're going to review Friends Forever issue 33, starring Applejack and Cherry Jubilee. So in this issue, Applejack learns the secret history of Cherry Jubilee. What is it? Gasp. We'll soon find out. But as always, let's start off with first impressions. Silver. Um, your first impressions, my friend. Well, Applejack gets a chance to shine, which I'm always grateful because even now she's a pony who doesn't seem to be given uh, the proper credit where credit is due. And this issue, I've always wondered about Cherry Jubilee, especially after uh, the last roundup. She had such an abbreviated role in it, and yet she was so important to Applejack's uh, string of events. It was very kind of her to take in a pony who was just out of the blue needed needed a place to stay. So it's fun to learn about her history. As Friends Forever go, this is pretty fun, but it falls into the trap that the story is about one character while the other stays off screen, even though the story that character's researching is about her co-star. It's very confusing. Mm. It's very confusing. Yeah, I get that because while rereading this one, I got the feeling that, hmm, this comic is focusing more on Applejack rather than the both of them. But for this one, it seems kind of warranted because Cherry Jubilee is being a jerk. So yeah, it's kind of warranted for this issue to have Applejack be the one to do all the talking rather than having both of them at the same time. Just like, just let me do the talking, y'all. <laughs> yep. I will also say that I absolutely adore uh, Calamity Main's design. Which one? Okay, uh, spoilers, but talking blue or red? Uh, blue. Uh, she she looks good. She looks good. The current Calamity. And as we all know, Silver Quill is all about the current Calamity. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Don't we know it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, but still. Well, um, as for me, I think, how do I put this? I like this comic. It is a really heartwarming story. It made me tear up in a few locations or a few parts of the story. And I do really like how the story turns out. um, Applejack goes to Cherry because, well, Cherry needed help and whatnot. And in the end, uh, we got to know more about Cherry because, well, who knew that Cherry had such a lush history behind her? And, well, I think this is one of the ways that the show can use backstories or expand background characters to an extent. Anyway, uh, Seppi? I, I liked it. It was a good story and whatnot, and I, I don't know. Ever since the show started and I saw the episode, I've kind of been in love with Jerry Jubilee's design. I don't know what it is. It's maybe that big hairstyle or something. I just... I don't know. I really like Cherry's ju- Cherry Jubilee style, and I was disappointed when we hadn't seen her until like season five in a relatively um, mediocre episode. But seeing this in a comic, I'm actually pretty glad because you know Cherry Jubilee. I I kind of want to know more about her 
even if I think she's just pretty, based on the fact that she kind of looks like she owns a brothel. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Oh, gosh. I know she doesn't, but she looks like she could own a southern brothel. No, 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 bad girl. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> this comic Dr. is... Dr. Get strong with this one. <laughs> oh, no. And anyway, this comic was written by Christina Rice and drawn by Tony Fleece. So we're going to get a lot of that goblin. There's always a goblin. Yeah. <sighs> and you just got to gobble it up. Uh, boys. Well, anyway, um, if you have not read this comic, I suggest that you do because it is a really good entertaining comic. And, well, let's start. So we start off with Apple's Jack. On Cherry Jubilee's farm, uh, Bucking. Sorry, uh, we start off with the comic with Cherry and Apple talking, and Cherry saying, "Thank you for coming to my aid because, well, somehow the equine flu just swooped by the farm and took most of my workers away, almost ninety nine percent of them." And Applejack, thank you for coming by and helping. I hope that I'm not disturbing you and your family's farm. And Applejack says, no problem, we got hit um, in the beginning of the season, and Pigback can do most of what I do, so yay. And meanwhile, oh. Cherry Jubilee is all like, well, that's nice, look, just don't go to the back of the yard, that's where everyone's resting, I mean, recoup in peace, I mean, uh, <laughs> recovering. <laughs> oh my. Uh, well, yeah, uh, after Cherry takes her leave, we are greeted by a howdy. We are greeted by Calam- Cal- Calamity Maine, uh, and it seems that her entourage or her crew are struck by the equine flu and need a place to rest. And well, Applejack knowing, or quote unquote knowing how Cherry Jubilee is, says that, yeah, you can take rest at the farm. I'm sure that the owners, uh, I- I'm sure that the owner here is um, gracious enough. And once the caravan comes along, we are introduced to the wagon, and it is Buffalo Bull Amazing Wild West Show. Oh, that's my fault. Which is false advertising. He is not a bull. Oh, Buffalo. <coughs> uh, well, you know, maybe there might be a little bit of mixed ancestry. I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Probably. But... And, well, once Applejack realized who owns the caravan, um... We see that the pony that was talking to Applejack was Calamity Maine, a very popular show pony. And Applejack's all excited and um, wants to tell Cherry that, hey, uh, a show pony is coming wrong and you wouldn't guess who it is. It's Buffalo Bull. And Cherry was shocked and says, I want them out. <laughs> Let me get my torch. No, 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 that's wrong, Silver. They don't get torches. Like, Southerners, they get their shotgun. This is Convo. It's the shotgun torch. Oh, yeah. It's a shotgun that launches torches. Makes sense, yeah. That would be the most awesome. Why is this not a thing? Oh, it was a thing in The Punisher. He had a gun that shoots knives. A gun that shoots knives. Norman's scaring me again. He's talking about punishment. You know, Norman is like, oh, this was a bad episode. I need to be punished. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. I'm wondering who is. <laughs> oh, Silver, you. Now that I've scarred half of you for life, I'll work on the other half. Oh, uh, you made baby cries. Oh. But anywho, so Cherry goes up to the caravan where Buffalo Bull is and wants to have a word with him. And Calamity Maine just says that, oh, Bull is not feeling too well and you shouldn't be disturbing him. And Cherry says, don't care, I want you out tomorrow. And Applejack is puzzled by this and goes talking to Cherry and says, um, I think you might be overreacting. And Cherry says, you know what, Applejack, tomorrow you're out too. I don't care. And slams the door. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> But still, um, Applejack just wonders, why is Cherry so mad? And Applejack just goes to the caravan and thinks that I should ask Buffalo about this. And you know, when she meets Buffalo and talks to him about it, and once Buffalo discovers where they're at, 
he says, we need to pack up and go. We need to pack up and leave as soon as possible. And this gets the two ponies puzzled by this. Like, why? Why such animosity between those two? So the next morning, Applejack greets Calamity and vice versa and says that Calamity doesn't have the heart to wake everybody up since they're sick. And Applejack says, you know what? I'll find a way to solve this problem. Don't worry. I'm good at solving problems. And also, uh, Calamity says that she may need some medicine for the whole um, crew. So Applejack volunteers herself too. So once in town, trying to get the, what you call this, medicine and whatnot, she also tries to think of a way to solve the problem between Buffalo Bull and Cherry Jubilee. And I don't know. All these all these errands she's running, she's trying to sound like a mafia <laughs> servant. Oh, you need some medicine? Hey, don't worry, I'll get my buddy Vitty. He was we'll we'll get we'll get you. Oh, you need you need to convince the owner here, I'll break your knees. <laughs> oh no. Speaking of that, I, I love how beforehand they were able to sneak in the phrase <laughs> None of your cherry bucking business. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. That that one's good. That one's good. Oh god, that's one of the best lines I've ever heard come out of my little pony. Buttons. Oh, but does it leave you feeling peeved? <laughs> oh, but honestly, I like flying feathers. No one gives a flying feather about you guys. What? Although I, I will always be fond of the inherent racism of stubborn as a mule. <laughs> no offense. No, I'm taken. <laughs> but I guarantee, but I guarantee you, he'll be the final villain of the series. <laughs> it's like you were all like, no offense, and I was all like, no, I'm taken, but. I lied. <laughs> oh, boys. But anyway, back to Applejack. I'll money on that. <laughs> but anyway, back to Applejack, who is in town. She just says, like, one of your best friend is the princess of friendship. You must have learned something from her. What would Twilight do? And, well, if it isn't a sign, the librarian says that the library is open for business. And it's Marion the Librarian from uh, Flim and Flam's flashback. I know. Oh, ain't she a Jezebel? I don't know. I never saw the Music Man in its full. But I don't know if the Marion in that was a little bit more manipulative. I don't know. I haven't seen it myself, too. All I know is poopy. Really, Norman, if you hadn't done that before the show, I, we can't stop now. <laughs> oh, you. But anywho, um, Applejack asked for every uh, book that relates to Buffalo Bulls show and well she starts doing her research two hours later she's fallen asleep looks like researching is not one of applejack's strongest point <laughs> well she's dreaming about the harvest so you know where her priorities lie yep but anywho by sure luck she discovers the answer for the troubles and she rushes off to cherry jubilee's farm and wants to talk to cherry Oh, should we call her Calamity Maine? Dun, dun, dun. Or, right should, or should we point out the Twilight Sparkle Reed poster, uh, poster located He's within the library? He's slowly taking over Equestria with a reading. <laughs> Yay. That poster's cute. I, I say that's a nice touch to the, um, what you call this background. That was cool. Oh, uh, but you never know until it becomes a totalitarian regime. <laughs> Be <laughs> very, very, very literate. You will read all the classics. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. You shall read to build a fire and send. You shall cry. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Anywho, uh, after being discovered, Cherry then just, well, spill the beans and tell Applejack everything she wants to know. And, well, it seems that Cherry was like Applejack from way young. She had dream about exploring Questra, feeling that there's more to her than just the farm, and wants to, well, discover Equestria. One day, the Buffalo Bull Roadshow came along. What was it? The Young Buffalo Bull... I, I can't read out the rest. But anyway, um, he came around town and Cherry was smitten, and so was Bull. And they created a show, and they were the talk of the town and whatnot. 
what do you want to bet the cherry jubilee tried to get a little too detailed on apple jacks like no no stop i don't need to hear this <laughs> i don't need to hear this no no no, no are you no. kidding me it's full of drama i love it Oh, Safi needs her stories. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I need my stories as a 19-year-old drama llama. Drama llama? Drama llama ding dong. Oh, boys. But anywho, uh, one night, Calamity, uh, one night, Bull uh, pops a question. Will you marry me, Calamity Main? And Cherry here just runs off. Runs off to the cherry farm and well, that's gotta be embarrassing for a bull. No, that's no bull. <laughs> oh, uh, but anywho, cherry wanders off to a cherry farm and well, he, he she was confused. Once she's over whatever she's feeling, she went back to bull but only to discover that bull left her away and left her in Dodge Junction. So from what I understand here, Cherry worked her way to the farm and bought it from the owner. And now she owns the farm. And rules with an iron fist. I doubt that. She's pretty nice. You doubt the resolve of the pony Cherry Empire? I don't know why I keep going to German today, but I'm just rolling with it. Stop it, please. You're offending, I think, Uh, multiple people. Well, that's... Kind of the goal, I guess. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, but anywho, um, Applejack says that, yeah, Buffalo Bull did hurt you, but you did hurt him by running away, so it's kind of jerky of you too. And Cherry didn't thought of it that way, but, well, she kind of feels bad now, but nope, she still resolved in kicking Bull out of her farm because said girl has a grudge. And Applejack just says that, yo, this is not cool. You you should really let it go. I mean, having a grudge is not good. Like, remember when I was... Sorry, um, remember when I had my ego and pride? Like, that that ain't good, y'all. You you need to let it go. I I, I was going to say, it's like, you're, you're confusing Applejack's situation as a grudge against the main six. That would be an entirely different episode. Yep, corrected myself there. Oh. Well, Rarity did say she had insulted Applejack's hair at some point. <gasps> okay, that may have been a grudge, but everyone else didn't deserve, you know. Oh, but anywho, but anywho... Um, Although I notice, Norman, the way you're describing this, are you trying to beat me out for terrible, uh, <laughs> terrible dialogue? That's whack, yo. <laughs> I'm. Trying. I mean, he's <laughs> I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying. Why you gotta be a hater? Why you gotta be so rude? <laughs> oh, boys, <laughs> I'm trying my best here. Uh, but anywho. Once Terry arrives at the caravan and wants to give Bull a piece of her mind, she sees Bull not looking so great. And, well, <laughs> Bull just lays on the, um, I don't know what you call, but he smooths her, saying that she looks beautiful as ever, and they two talk, and, well, they work it out. And they forgive one another, and uh, one week later, everyone is feeling well, and they're having a concert. Yeehaw! Of course, they do. They don't know that Applejack and Current Calamity are listening, and oh, the things that are said uh, yeah. be kind of hurtful towards Calamity. True, true. Yeah, <laughs> that that was not fire. That's even her real name. Well, yeah, but still, uh, Applejack's <laughs> Applejack says that I'm sure he doesn't mean that. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't mean that, because you know, old man sick, old lover around. Tensions running high. Words will be said. Although, wouldn't it have been a bitter pill if he just kept talking? Yeah, that girl thinks she's the hot stuff, but honestly, I've seen bay hails. Hay bales with a lot more talent. I'm sure he don't mean that either. I swear, she is the weirdest. And it just goes downhill from there. I have a weird imagination. Um, no, it's okay. I I was half expecting that too. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh but no, this is my little pony where things don't go down that way. But anyhow, 
Uh, Sadly. <laughs> but anywho, it seems that everyone is friends now. And like I mentioned before, one week later, everyone's feeling well. And time to start the show. I think this is the first Buffalo Bull Rodeo in Dodge Junction in how many moons now? Like, it has been so long. So, uh, the show starts and Applejack says to Calamity that, Hey, ain't you supposed to be up on stage? And Calamity says, Nah, I'm sitting this one out. Bull said to me that uh, basically he thought he'd get a cactus, which would be a little <laughs> bit more cuddly for the uh, show. Yes, I'm still on this kick. <laughs> You're just so mean. Don't be mean. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not mean. I'm just demented. <laughs> oh, you. I believe it. Uh, but anywho. That's right. Seems legit. Buffalo Bull up on stage. He, he just says that, welcome to the show, and I present you your very own Cherry Jubilee. wee And everybody claps and woos. And Cherry Jubilee pops up on stage and says that it's like wearing her own boots or like that. I, I don't know the phrase. But she misses the limelight and wants to invite a few friends, especially Calamity Maine. So there will be a trio up on stage. And also, this could have happened without the help of Honest Applejack. Who's not getting paid for her labor because she was going off and reading the whole dip <laughs> dang day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably. And comic ends. I ain't and paid you to read up on my history. Yeehaw! Oh, boys. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> comic ends and, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what to make out of this. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad that Cherry Jubilee and, Bu- and Buffalo Bill did not rekindle their romance. This is, too much has happened, too much time has passed. Now it's just being friends and burying the hatchet. But it doesn't have to be romance yet. Yeah, yet, yet. I mean, they're still bitter. They're still bitter. The bitterness doesn't uh, go away that fast. I don't know. This is My Little Pony. They seem to bury the hatchet very quickly. And Kindle Romance ASAP? Dude. That we don't know yet. Yeah, true. But still, uh, it's good to see that bull here may have a future with Cherry, so that's awesome. Uh, that's no bull. <laughs> uh, yes, I went there. And I'd do it again. Uh, so, Silver, that's your thoughts? Those are pretty much my thoughts. It's a really enjoyable one, but at the same time, it's also kind of short. I mean, the flow of events is, I hate them. Oh, we gotta go. We hate them. Reading. History. Bye. Hi. Okay. No, you're not getting paid. <laughs> so, uh, it is 22, well, if you're not including the first few pages, um, it is a 20-page comic. So, do you think that this comic flows well? Or is it just short? Oh, it flows well. It just, it just flows very quickly. Very quickly. It goes very quickly. Hop, hop, hop. Well, I, I don't buy into the whole, oh, it's just the pages. We've read some comics that felt like they went on longer in a good way. And we've read, read some comics that went on longer in a bad way. Oh, true. Very bad way. Hmm. Same with episodes. True, true. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, this did feel pretty fast, but in a good way. I, I don't know how to say, but the flow of events, the way that things went was pretty smooth. I don't see any problem where we could say that, oh, this was too rushed or this was too draggy. Like, every beat here matters. Like, every page and panel matters. Especially the one where the Thunder Gremlin appears. Because it's a Tony Fleet novel, and my goodness, those guys, those little guys must be there. It's a Where's Waldo tradition. Yeah, why not, right? Mm-hmm. By, by now, it's already a Tony Fleece thing, so we'll roll with it, right? I mean, it doesn't have oh, to be yeah. that not, bad. Oh, I'm not complaining. I just, I just appreciate that he's created this Where's Waldo element to all his stories. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And I appreciate it. Oh, by the way, if you look at that uh, page with the two-page spread about the history of Cherry Jubilee, you can see in one panel, um, it seems that this flashback is not 
so far back because we get to see a Pinkie Pie, a Spitfire, Shirley, Vinyl, and so on. Like, even Flash is there. So it's like, hmm, how old is well, Flash? Well, actually, Norman, I, I hate to break it to you, but all those characters are actually really old. Uh, Flash has been lied about his age while, and he's been demoted so many times within the Cantalot military. So, oh, I've just ruined Flashlight even more for people. I'm implying <laughs> that he's an old fogey. <laughs> you meanie. How could you? Uh, I could very easily. Thank you for asking. Oh, uh, but still, but still, I, I'm just kidding around with this one. It's nice to see Tony Fleece doing this kind of thing because it is very derp. <laughs> Hmm. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, Seppi, what do you think of this comic? I enjoyed it. It was a nice, fun ride. And, you know, into drama and obscurity and romance. Basically all the soap opera stuff that girls love. Uh, so that's good for Today you. Today on All My Ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. I, I don't actually watch show pro- operas, just just a disclaimer for everyone out there. Yeah, you just watch K drama. <laughs> nah, I watch Brony drama. I don't <laughs> oh, know. God. Well we're never lacking for that. New seasons co- in the new seasons going, I fully expect we'll have some new drama. Mm-hmm, that's good brony drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh boys. Let hey. me drink all these brony tears anyway. It it was a fun romp. I I love seeing Cherry Jubilee again, even if it's more or less her conflict, and she's kind of being a um. How how do I say this without going above the PG rating? A jerk. She's got a business that got, but she's put a natch in it. She's a biz natch. She's got her panties in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not wearing pants. And she's on Shark Week, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, alrighty then. Uh, as for me, I like this comic. This comic was fun. I highly enjoyed this comic a lot. The story here was good. The art was good. And the flow tempo like Silver Sid was fast, but I didn't really mind it. To me, I felt it was rather smooth. Especially when you read it through the Comicsology app where they presented everything in um, panel-by-panel format, which is really cool. And overall, this story was fun. Like, this is a good way to introduce some backstories to some background characters. So if we want to see the history of Agent Sweetie Drops, this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, those are my thoughts. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, like I say, Season 7 is now in full swing. We are, once again, into the breach. Well, once again, we've been remiss. We've not given our full thoughts on Season 6. I think it's time we rectify this situation. True that, true that. I believe we haven't <laughs> talked about Season 6 as a whole. Um, after our, uh, whatchamacallit, last review of the final season, which was To Wear and Back Again, we didn't give our overall impressions of said season. And I think um, next week we shall do a Season 6 retrospect. I think it's about time, right? It's about time. Well, no, wait. It's about time was uh, Season 3, I believe. (laughs) It's about (laughs) time. Yeah, let me double check. Or was that Season 2? I think it was Season 2. Let me see. I don't see it. Wow. Maybe Season 4. Well, it couldn't be Season 4. Twilight was an alicorn by then. Oh, yeah, Season 3. Huh. That's strange. I don't see it. What? You all be talking crazy talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it season... Oh, season two. There we go. Huh, wow. It's a season two episode. And it's about time is the one where Twilight time travels, right? Yes, yeah, she did. Very briefly, and mostly it's her worrying about what happens in the future. Oh my, that... What happened was T-Rex happened. I know, but that yeah, was she, set up in she, season two. Goodness. Well, they they didn't really... I don't know if I'd call it set up, but they t- took advantage of the plot point. Still, that was awesome. But anywho, so next week we're going to talk about season six as a whole and, well, give our impressions of it. 
Uh, so anyway, before we leave, I would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nemtrakotorius, Starstream, and also Master of Lag. Thank you very much for the support, guys. And if you guys want to support us too, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. A dollar will give you a thank you and full access to whatever we're talking about and also deleted or exclusive things for the Patreon members. And five bucks will give you, well, if you want us to talk about something or discuss something or review something, it's over there. Um, recently we talked about the Duckwing Duck comic. That was really fun to do. And Sweetie Bot editing it, she had a good laugh with it. So, yeah, if you want us to do something like that, it's over there. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quail, and we will be very, very Western. Yeehaw! I have been Sapphire Heart Song. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode. See ya! Adios! Bye-bye! <laughs>so i got no idea what to say for an outro eha eh, eha sometimes works there's a snake in my boot <laughs> oh there's a snake in my boot to infinity and beyond then that's right who are you calling busted buster sid phillips